Do you think mm-hmm. that, uh, just so I'm tracking, like, does Tesla still have the best electric cars? Or you're saying, like, at this point, no. they're not even better than, like, Fords? Or I don't even know who the example would be for the- No, I mean, there's, there, there, it, it depends on how you, ju- how you want to judge it, right? So what Tesla does have, and what is unfortunately not good for society, is the private supercharger network which is more reliable than the general public supercharger network. Uh. Now, that's great if you own a Tesla. But if you want to look at the world, yeah, it's not good because it's a waste of space and a waste of energy to have any kind of charging area that's only good for one make yeah. of car. Imagine gas station. Imagine you had to take your Ford to a Ford gas station and there's a Chevy gas station right fucking there. Yeah. I mean, that would be terrible, right? And that's what we're looking at with Tesla charging, right? It's okay. great if you own a Tesla. It's reliable because the software only needs to interact with one type of car as opposed to with yeah. every type of car. Remember when CarPlay, Apple CarPlay first started and it was really wonky with all the different types of cars, mm-hmm. but they sort of figured it out eventually. That's where we're at with So with Teslas would budget. only be able to charge at Tesla stations and everything else would have to charge at the everything else station. Well, Teslas can charge everywhere. Oh, okay. But other cars can't charge at Tesla stations right now. That's okay. that's yeah. what we're looking at right now. So good for Tesla owners bad for the world so that'll literally be their big selling point if they maintain that network over time where it'll be like a verizon map where it'll be like here's the access to energy if you don't have a tesla here's what it looks like if you do and now in europe in the european union tesla stations are legally required in many countries in the eu to provide power to non-teslas yeah, so they're that required a- to have batteries that can come out too. That ain't happening here. So, so this right. this sounds so- like Tesla has a huge future if he can like, in if he can use his control over the government's entire space program because he's the only one sending us up there anymore, right? Like to get him to be like, hey, maybe uh, maybe you just let us do this little monopoly thing where we put our charging stations everywhere. And hey, look, the thing about a Tesla station, it draws so much power. We can't have a Ford or GM station within three city blocks of any of them. Well, yeah, we do have a lot of them, and it is going to be hard mm-hmm. for them to find a place to put theirs. Like, like, oh, I, I don't think it's them the same legislating department. their way. In, I think it's a different into, department monopoly. you're talking to. But oh, they're all interconnected, but, right? But with, with the in, in, without without <laughs> something like the EU regulating it, which right now we don't have, you know, they do have an advantage there. Having said that, the cars themselves have in many ways lost their first mover advantage that they have. Yeah, for um, sure. Ford, um, not just Ford and General Motors, you know, Audi, Porsche, um, uh, you know, you have, and, and not to mention you have startups like Lucid and Rivian. Um, Audi and Porsche make are, more sense anyway to compete against someone who's going to buy a $100,000 Tesla. They're probably. I mean, I just drove the Lucid Air, dude. The Lucid Air is way nicer than the Tesla Model S. I mean, it doesn't Mm -hmm. have the supercharger network, but it's a nicer product. The Rivian trucks and SUVs are dope as. I've been in one of those. They're they're awesome. They're so. I mean, they're expensive. They're not well thought out. But there's the they're built. You know, you would never get in a Rivian and go. This is the company's first vehicle. It's Mm -hmm. it's it's built super super nicely, and then you've got. You know, I mean, w- whether you agree with it or not, the government is forcing all mainstream manufacturers to produce a certain number of, of electric vehicles. The Hyundai Ionic and the Kia uh, EV6 are super nice. I mean, really, you know, they're they're. I have a um, my wife drives every day the Ford uh, Mach E, which is a really nice product. Um, Tesla so is like, losing its prestige. Because of well, they look. They got a fifteen to twenty year first mover advantage that that they could have really intelligently worked with and worked from, but from the Twitter thing and all this other shit, they're burning that credibility by not investing properly in the product and with all these crazy distractions and him doing him burning his liberal cred by going crazy fucking right wingy. It's not going to go well for them. Yeah, that's that's what I was starting to say. Like he he went right before the midterms and said vote Republican. 
you may agree or disagree with that, but uh, it's undeniable that it's bad. Not who buys his cars. <laughs> right? It, it's not who buys his cars. And then you got a guy like Michael Jordan saying, hey, you know, I, I don't get political because Republicans buy sneakers too. Right? That's yeah, a yeah. famous Jordan line. The Republicans barely bought Teslas in the first place. And now you're all in with them. Bad call. Why do you it's think Republicans good. weren't buying Teslas? I think it, it, I was looking at it as a green thing in the same way that I think Republicans don't really buy Priuses. Yeah, oh, I yeah. mean, I don't know. Well, and people and look, certain people are Pretty trying. Stable. I mean, gee, have you seen the new electric Hummer? I mean, it's, it's <laughs> not for lack of trying. They're figuring yeah. out that the Hummer get- like went from and this is like mid 2000s. So I'm like in like a teenager. I'm in high school. I remember like the I Hummer love. being the sickest of sick, cool things in like 2004, 2005. And then by the time I was in college, you saw a Hummer. And people were like, wow, that's gay. And it's like, what, kryptonite, what, right? when, did, when did we switch? No. Like, we, <laughs> yeah. Three uh, years ago, we Katrina. all said it was a cool army truck. <laughs> like, and now, yeah. it's, now it's not a cool we army switched, truched, truck. Um, we switched like a week had. after Hurricane Katrina. Um, Why? Oh, yeah? Because gasoline was five fucking dollars a gallon, and it didn't. It, yeah. it never went back down again ever. Yeah. It's, it's been it it's a... been crazy high <laughs> since. It has. He, like, yeah, like, yeah Kyle, no, Kyle's right. There was there was a very drastic shift right around Hurricane Katrina, and all of a sudden, you know, gas guzzling, you know, giant SUVs immediately became uncool. And 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 one of the you know, if you look at GM, you look at. Ford to an instance, you certainly look at Dodge and you, and they go, how do I get my middle America people to buy an electric car? You make it more wasteful than a gas car. That's how, that's <laughs> how you do it. A 9,000 pound, a thousand horsepower truck uh, <laughs> that somehow is less efficient the than a gas cars car. Are outra- the Rivian's 8,000 pounds. 